For the last 15 years or so, I've been making double flutes in an over-under design. I think it makes a lot of sense using an over-under design because the flute balance is really easy. I can put the uh, flute right there and it just balances super, super easy. It rests on my thumb, um, on the uh, thumb rest here, which is one of the saddles joining the, t the two flutes together. The challenge with these flutes is that they are literally two flutes that are then joined together and all of that is relatively difficult to do. And so, um, so you really are paying for two flutes plus the joinery of joining everything together when you get a double flute. And so you get this instrument and then you want to clear the water out. How do you clear the water out of this? Because this is a very complex um, air passage through this mouthpiece. And so in the past I would tell people to slide their totems up, hold their flute up like this, and blow really hard and blast as much water as they could up and out of the flute. And then leave the totems off and let the flute dry out uh, so that they didn't have any compromised um, glue joints and things. However, in the back of my mind I've always been thinking there's got to be a way of making this flute so that it's easy for people to clean it, so that it's easy for it to dry out and for all the parts to dry and the joints not to ever get compromised. So I came up with an idea and then using the same si uh, sort of designs that I use in my easy clean bass flutes, uh, I've got a set of O-rings that are um, greased up real well and they, uh, they then go right into the, uh, the flutes. So when it's time to clean the flute, I simply remove the mouthpiece, tip the flute upside down, dump all the water out, take the totems off, let it dry out. It's now easy to get in. If I want to swab it out, it's easy to swab it out. I can blow the water out of this real easy, <sighs> blow that water out, and then just let this dry out. That dries out real easy, and everything is, is good. It all works really, really well together now. And so... This is actually the second of this design. The first one I'll show you in another video. It's a high-low double flute. This one is a bass flute. It's uh, made out of ironwood, so it's quite heavy. Um, and so it's really nice having that thumb rest there because it allows me to really hold the flute, and yet I can still finger it without having to worry about dropping it. Without even my mouthpiece mouth on it, look how you know I can, I can just do that so easy. And, um, and not worry about dropping this flute. I'm going to go ahead and show you a few different ways to play this flute. The first way is as a single. So that's the first way I can play it, is just as a single. Now, when you look at the mouthpiece, you can see that there's actually two different holes. And this mouthpiece is designed to be very easy to put your mouth on. Um, it's not two flutes coming together with a great big mouthpiece or anything. It's just very, very simple and elegant. And uh, so I can play both flutes, and this would be using this flute as a drone. sounding right so then I can also take and each one of these leather straps covers a hole so this bottom flute is literally a completely separate flute there are six holes on this bottom flute and it can be played as a completely independent flute now if I if I just uncover one hole on the bottom I can then um, have a flute that I drone with in a totally different note
which is really cool. Um, I have a couple of favorite ones that I like droning with. I really, this is a really fun when I have two holes uncovered on the bottom. Playing Amazing Grace is really fun drone this way. things for 15 years and I just discovered that this year. Isn't that awesome? I just, I love that. Um, okay, then I can come and I can uncover three holes on the bottom flute and I can play this as a drone which would be like so I can play like that or I can move my bottom hand to the bottom flute leaving my top hand on the top flute and by and large if I just lock that third finger down and just keep it down all the time then um, I'm going to be in a, in a safe zone where everything I play sounds good together and so you know just like normal I lift 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 those would be the scales for the bottom hole just lift 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 um, I don't want to go into anything funky, you know, where I maybe lift the middle finger or these two fingers, but just lift from the bottom, and then on the top, lift, lift. And so those are the basic notes that I'm going to have available to play with right now. just too complicated and so what I recommend that you do is try doing this kind of thing tap your head rub your tummy right and then go from that to rub your head tap your tummy and and, and seriously practicing that kind of um, little exercise is really really helpful when playing a double flute um, what it forces you to do is it forces you to to kind of split your mind into two parts and to think about two different things at the same time. And that exercise, for me, that exercise was really helpful in getting better and better at playing a, a double flute. And so, anyways, they're a lot of fun. There's, I'm sure there's many, many more ways to play them than I've learned yet, and I look forward to hearing what you guys create with your double flutes. Oh, I better clean this now. Oh yeah, it's easy. <laughs> 